Well, howdy there, Internet students. Mr. Hermanson again. Uh, today we're going to learn about squares and square roots. Um, basically, squaring a number is multiplying by itself, and it gets the term because um, you know how to find the area of a square, right? Uh, square means both sides are the same, like uh, this. So let's say one side is 15, the other side is 15. Well, the way you find the area of a rectangle is base times height, but since they're both the same, you just do 15 times 15, which is 15 to the second power, and that's where the word square comes from. Okay, um, so that's the first thing we're going to do, um, and uh, we're going to look for a shortcut for doing that on your calculator also. Also, so multiply each of these numbers times themselves to find the square of each number. Go ahead and give that a shot. Just do like this. Uh, and on your calculator, depending on what your second power look, button looks like, but for me, on this calculator, I got that right there. I just multiplied it by itself. Um, that was 15 times 15, but 5 times itself is 25. All right. Go ahead and find, oh, when you do a fraction, remember you're multiplying the number by itself. You can do that on your calculator. I guess what I would do is um, 3 divided by 5 first, and then I would square that. And that gives me 0.36. But if it's a fraction, we want that written as a fraction. So I'm not sure if your calculator can turn that answer back into a fraction or not. I know our fifth grade calculators can. But it might be easier just for you to do 3 times 3 on top, which gives you 9, and 5 times 5 on bottom, which gives you 25. I'm going to insist that your answer is a fraction if you're squaring a fraction. All right, go ahead and do the last two. Now, in the last one, um, some calculators can, can get this wrong. But basically, you have to remember that squaring it is multiplying it by itself. So we're multiplying a negative times a negative, which would be a positive. Now, let's see what happens on this calculator. If I put in negative 2, negative 2, and I square it, see, it gets 4. But i got to show you on my other calculator, uh, you get a little bit different result, and there's a couple ways you can fix that on your calculator if you um, if you have that problem. Here's the way you don't want to put that in. If I put in negative four like this, and then do the second power on this calculator, it's going to tell me it's negative sixteen. So negative two raised to itself. To the second power. See the problem there? So here's how I might fix that. If you wanted to square the number negative 2, in other words, multiply that number by itself, on this calculator I would hit enter first and then square that answer and then it'll give me positive 4. Otherwise, uh, most calculators will have parentheses also. And so just to make sure you're squaring that number, put them in parentheses and then raise it to that because you should get a positive number when you do that. All right. Uh, so now um, you, perfect squares are if you take a whole number and square it, I'll give you another example. 10 squared is 100. All of these numbers that we get when we square a whole number, we call perfect squares. Okay. Um, so 4 is a perfect square, 81 is a perfect square, 36, um, 13 squared is 169, so 169 is a perfect square. And what's nice about those is you can figure out, knowing it's a perfect square, what number times itself equals that. Okay, so we're going to do 1 times 1, which is 1, that's a perfect square, 2 times 2, etc., Go ahead and fill in the rest of those. All right. So um, we can use that 
squared. Now remember you can use the second button to get those also. So in this last one I could have just done 9 to the second. All right, now to find the area of a square, we're just going to multiply. We'll give you write down a little formula. We're going to multiply the side times itself. All right, so we're going to do 16 squared to get the area of this first one, which is 256. And we call those square inches, which you should remember from finding area. So on this one, we have to do 4.7 times itself. I'll let you finish the work on that one. And then find the last one here, too, and make sure you label them. Since the second power we call, we use the term squared, um, we can use that in our labels also. So notice I just put a 2 there. That means square feet, feet squared. All right? So that's just a short way of saying square feet. All right. Okay, so here's a multiplication table listing um, all kinds of problems. Um, go through it and circle the perfect squares. Now you get those by having the same row and column multiplied together, the same number. 1 times 1 is 1. There's a perfect square. Go ahead and circle all the perfect squares, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, and so on. All right, so keep this handy. I think it's going to come, uh, I think we're going to use this table here. All right, um, so now we say that two operations that undo each other are called inverse operations, like addition and subtraction undo each other, uh, multiplication and division undo each other. Um, and these are just examples of that. Well, um, squaring has an undoing operation. It's called the square root. So if I square 9, so in other words, I'm doing 9 times 9, I get 81. The way you undo that is you do the square root of 81, and that equals 9. Now, on my big calculator, it shows that really nice. Um, I just press second and x squared, and then I put in 81, and I get 9. Um, if the numbers are like 81, where they're perfect squares, we can find those in that table. Okay. On the other calculator, and yours might be more like this, um, the squared button is right here. So you would put in 81 and then push that button, and that would tell you what number times itself equals that, which is 9. Okay. Um, for these first few, we should be able to just use these tables. So if I want to know what number times itself equals 36, so the square root of 36, I just find 36 on the table and see what number times itself equals that, and that's 6. So the square root of 36 is 6. All right. Now, um, the thing about square roots is um, we just talked about the square root of 36 is equal to 6. That's the positive square root. There's also a negative square root of 36, and that equals negative 6, because remember that a negative times a negative is a positive. So all whole numbers have two square roots, a positive one and a negative one. The positive one, we call the, that the principal square root. And when you do, the, to get the principal square root of 49, you write this. And so we're wondering what number times itself is 49. You can go back and look at that table. And you will see 49 right here. So that number is 7. 7 times 7 is 49. So the principal square root of 49 is 7. Remember, there's also a negative square root of 49, and that's negative 7. Um, so when it says find the square roots, like on number 9, you're going to get both the positive and the negative one. Okay? So, um, so you can use your calculator 
to find the positive one, and then the negative one is just the opposite of that. So like, uh, I'll do number 11 with you. Um, and so we're going to do the square root of 2.25. And we see it's 1.5. Well, I know there's also a negative square root. So I'm going to write both of them here. Okay. So go ahead and do number 10 and 12. Did you see on number 12 that you had to do the square root of 16 for the top and the square root of 49 for the bottom, which is 4 and 7? Okay. Um, for these problems, we can just use our calculator. Or some of them, like this, for the first couple, you can probably figure that out because you're wondering what number times this up is 49 and you know that's going to be 7, right? What number times itself is 64? You probably know that's 8. Um, negative 9 squared. Now, here's where we got to be careful. If we do, to get negative 9 squared on this calculator, I have to do 9 squared and then make that a negative number afterwards. So that's negative 81. On my other calculator, I can just put it negative 9 to the second to get that, which is negative 81. All right. Remember on something like this, you have to do the square root of both the top and the bottom. All right, I'm going to let you calculate these and see what you get. All right, um, I just want to talk about a couple of these. You probably figured it out on most of these. Um, but this last one, uh, if you take negative 4, oops, that should be positive 16, right? You should have got positive 16 for that. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. And 0.4 times 0.4 is 0.16. All right, um, now to find the side length of each square, again, we're going to backtrack. Um, we want to know what number times itself is 64. So side times side equals 64. So we know that one's 8. And the way you get that 8 is you do the principal square root of 64. Um, so go ahead and find the side length on each of these by the rest of them by finding the square root. The way you can check your answer, too, is just multiply 18 times 18 and make sure you get 324. All right. Uh, looks like you're ready for your homework. Uh, go ahead and do those. Um, submit your answers on the Google form, and we'll talk to you soon.